the long standing solidarity and support Zimbabwe has enjoyed from the progressive members of the Committee of Nations, which date back to the days of our protracted 16 year war of liberation for our independence, freedom, and democracy. The 2023 harmonized general elections have come and gone. I once again thank you, my fellow Morgans, for dutifully preserving and safeguarding our national unity, peace before, during, and after the elections. The people of this precious nation, which is born out of the sacred blood of those who fought for our independence, our freedom, our democracy, and indeed the right to vote, have now spoken. Our unparalleled conduct before, during, and after electoral processes praise with you and will be an everlasting standard and benchmark as we continue to deepen and entrench constitutional democracy in our motherland, Zimbabwe. There are no losers but a victory for the people of Zimbabwe against the neo-colonial hegemonic tendencies of our country's detractors and those who believe that mighty is right. Counter-revolutionary forces and their proxies will never prevail in our free motherland, Zimbabwe. Let us now look ahead with unflinching focus and determination and burdened by our rich history as a resilient and a warrior people of Monomtata. We continue to defy the onslaught of illegal sanctions as well as the negative narratives peddled by those bent on standing our country's development. Our strength in our diverse cultures, capacities and competencies have seen us realize unprecedented successes towards Vision 2030. Zimbabwe is surely on the rise. Our national development philosophy, Nita!
eternity, leaving no one and no place behind. I stand before you, my fellow Zimbabweans and countrymen women, at this historic moment of our nation as the president of all Zimbabweans, regardless of tribe, religion, color, creed, or political persuasion. I am honored by the trust and confidence you have reposed in me to continue to say in the office of president. Through your democratic vote, we have renewed and extended my mandate and that of our colossal revolutionary mass party, ZANPF. I offer you individually and collectively unity, love, oneness, and brotherhood. As the people of the great State of Mozambique, Zimbabwe, not Mozambique, I'm sorry. Independent state of Zimbabwe. Fellow compatriots, comrades, and friends, my new government will deliver on the promises we have made to you. The transformation of the living standards of our people, especially those in rural communities, will be accelerated. Why? signs of those in urban areas will not be neglected. Responsive policies, projects and programs which began during the first term of my presidency are on course to lift many more people out of poverty and into prosperity. The hurdles such as the illegal and their sanctions and machinations of our detractors must be knocked out of our way through unity of purpose, hard, honest work, innovativeness, resilience, focus, and determination. Together, as a united people, all challenges can be overcome. Big upon brick, stone upon stone, step by step. The ongoing success milestones in the agriculture sector will be consolidated during this new term under my leadership. To date, we are food secure in both maize and wheat. Sectors have realized unprecedented growth. I commend our farmers as well as stakeholders in the agricultural sector for these achievements. This is indisputable evidence of the success of our land reform program and the responsive pro people policies of the Second Republic. Going forward, my new government will prioritize guaranteeing this momentum through household and national food security. The construction of dams, accelerated irrigation development, coupled with the ongoing bore drilling program in every village and the school, is set to insulate our agriculture sector from climate change induced weather fluctuations. Vulnerable districts and areas are now our critical focus. Rural development will be implemented at full scale through robust rural agriculture industrialization models. This will result in our 35,000 villages countrywide having productive agro-based companies owned and run by the benefit communities. The program will see a multifold increase in rural incomes and sustainable livelihoods. The success of our agriculture sector has ripple effects to our agro-based manufacturing sector and industrial base. The factor is that we all deserve.
desire can only succeed if there is the requisite throughput from agriculture and the mining among other sectors. Therefore, I call upon us to respect each other as a united people, no matter where we live or our economic activities. Comrades and friends, countrymen and women, the past five years have delivered valuable lessons on our intricate economy, especially the fact that a national currency that is supported by a vibrant productive sector is indispensable to sustainable development. No country has ever developed without its own currency. Further, we can only develop and grow the economy based on our own internal resources. I urge us all to believe in ourselves and our abilities as Zimbabweans and as Africans. Development and national prosperity based on what we have is more sustainable and durable. We must take pride in who we are and what we can do for ourselves as a people. The numerous mineral resources in our country must be sustainably be exploited to leapfrog our industrialization and development. The lives of our citizens and the fortunes of our country as a whole must be improved. We expect nothing less. Our economy must realize maximum benefits from increased beneficiation and value addition. As such, my new administration through the Responsible Mining Initiative will ensure great stewardship of our finite natural resources. These must benefit both present and the future generations. Riding on our abundant resources, as well as the skilled and hard-working people, Zimbabwe is poised to take its place as a competitive manufacturing jurisdiction in Africa. I exhort industry and commerce stakeholders to be patriotic and always seek an intricate balance between profit and the plight of our people. Profiteering, opportunistic tendencies and greed will not move our country forward. Together, let us grow our country's manufacturing base to use consume and wear what we produce. The new government shall continue to foster a predictable business environment where capital will feel safe. Those who want to invest in our country are welcome based on respect and the mutual benefits for shared prosperity. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the modernization of our national infrastructure, utilities and amenities will continue unabated. Transport, interconnectivity within the provinces, and the further linking us to the rest of the Sandic region and the continent are our priority. The internal capacities and local skills in the road construction that have been developed over the past five years will be deployed to further modernize our road network. Agreements and investments to modernize, repair and expand our railway system will be consummated to allow agent revitalization of the sector. Water is life and a solution not only to sustainable food security and sovereignty, but also for the water and the sanitation needs of our fast-growing urban populations. Gwai, Shangani, and the Kunzi dams, which are said to meet the needs of Bulawayo and the Arara metropolitan provinces, are scheduled 
to be completed soon. During the last five-year term, my administration delivered energy self-sufficiency to our country. Magesi Tavanao, Apache na achati nyame abora mfridge anenga chirewa nema. Magesi hariko. Kajas of our comprehensive strategic partnership with the People's Republic of China. One day seven and unit eight are now on stream, giving us three hundred and six hundred and thirty-five megawatts. We will now move on to upgrade the one unit one to unit six, among other national strategic power generation stations. Additional work is continuing towards broadening our energy mix inclusive of renewable energy to increase the total energy output in tandem with the demand created by our fast-growing economy. The recovery and the growth of the tourism sector in the post-COVID-19 pandemic era is testimony that Zimbabwe is a safe and competitive tourism destination. The joint marketing of Brand Zimbabwe with both regional and continental partnerships is critical to sustain growth in this particular sector. The economic role of SMEs, women and the youth as key players in our quest to realize Vision 2030 is set to receive due attention. My new government shall further consolidate the achievements in the health and education sectors for quality health delivery and education, especially for those in our country's side. Resources will be availed to equip and modernize the numerous schools and clinics constructed during the last five years. The requisite resources will be channeled towards the commercialization of startups developed in our innovation hubs and industrial parks under heritage based education 5.0. Matters related to housing delivery, water and sanitation, among other social amenities, remain key to the modern, empowered, and prosperous Zimbabwe we all want and we all deserve. I call upon those elected at the local government levels to wholeheartedly serve the people of our great country, Zimbabwe. Our citizens, especially those in urban areas, have enjoyed poor service delivery for far too long under the opposition. Red pairs deserve hard working and competent local authorities who will ensure that our towns and the cities regain their long lost pride through world class service delivery. Going into the future, those in the arts, sports and creative cultural industries will be supported to express their talents. However, the fraternity is called upon to promote and protect our Zimbabwean values, our African culture, as well as our Christian-oriented family traditions and the norms. Never use the arts or media to promote self-hate and divisions in our nation. Meanwhile, I express my profound gratitude to our traditional leaders, Mazimambuedu, who are the custodians of our land and culture, together with the religious community who joined the crusade to preach peace, love, and harmony in our nation. The institution of traditional leadership and the freedom of worship will continue to be protected by my new government. Comrades and friends, under my leadership, 
and the new Zan PF government. Democracy, good governance, the rule of law, and the politics of tolerance will be entrenched in line with the spirit and letter of our sacred national constitution and laws. We make no apologies for entrenching. African in the both thoughts and deeds. Zimbabwe is a sovereign state and a friend to all and an enemy to none. Our membership and engagement with SADC, the African Union and the United Nations and other countries in the, in the Committee of Nations remain guided by the principles of mutual respect and the sovereign equality of nations as enshrined in the United Nations Charter. The undermining of our national institutions and the laws will not be condoned under whatever guise. No country or a group of persons should disregard the sovereign decisions and the views of the people of our motherland, Zimbabwe. We will never be second class citizens in our own country. We stand ready to welcome those nations who want to work with the new ZANPF government to build lasting partnerships to make the world a better place. We look forward to joining both traditional and emerging global institutions who accept our hand of friendship. The architecture and the composition of the United Nations Security Council must be reformed to reflect democracy at a global level as well as the equality of nations. Our country is committed to playing its part for the realization of global peace and security and card on dialogue and the peaceful resolution of conflict. My dear fellow Zimbabweans, comrades and friends, in concluding, allow me to once again commend you, the people of our great motherland, Zimbabwe, the people of Onomtapa, for the successful watershed, peaceful, free, fair, transparent, and credible harmonized general elections. We have shamed our detractors who predicted and clandestinely financed mayhem expecting the West from us before, during, and after our polls. The will of the Zimbabwean people has been expressed and they must be respected. In Haiti, we have defended this sacred land bequeathed to us by our great heroes and heroines. They paid for the democracy, independence and sovereignty we are enjoying today with their precious lives. This thunderous victory for our sovereignty, dignity and right to be masters of our own destiny is in their honor. In the enduring spirit of unity and peace, that characterized this past election, I once again call upon all Zimbabweans, countrymen, women, to say no, no, no to violence, no to tribalism, no to regionalism, no to hate speech and other divisive tendencies. 
We love peace. We love harmony. And we love tolerance. And these are our DNA as the Zimbabwean people. Let us now turn our focus back to our collective duty and obligation to build, modernize, and industrialize our motherland, Zimbabwe. The quality of life of our people, from Zambezi to Limpopo, from Plum Tree to Mkari, must be improved. That duty lies with us all as Zimbabweans, both here at home and those in the diaspora. No one else will build our country. Nika! Nika! No one should ever come from elsewhere to govern our country or to build our country but ourselves. We have the primary responsibility to offer supplications and prayers for our country. We must do all those things ourselves. This is who we are as the great people of Monomtapa, the great people of Zimbabwe. Nika! Igo Tongwa! Igo Namatirwa! Ilife! Liwuswe! Likulekele! Abani Kasvano! Under the new ZANPF government, and in my leadership, rest assured that you, my fellow Zimbabweans and compatriots, boys and girls, at home and abroad, shall continue to be at the center of all our policies, projects, and programs. We remain forever a government from the people, by the people, and for the people. The future of our great motherland, Zimbabwe, the future of the Republic of Monomtapa is bright. Long live our freedom. Long live democracy. Long live independence. Long live our unity and peace. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. I thank you.